Hi, this is Benjamin Rolnick, and I suffer from a rare disease, but maybe you have it too. And to kind of explain, when I was growing up in elementary school through high school, I would take months and weeks off of school. Literally, people would make fun of me during a time in high school, I think about ninth or 10th grade, where I actually took about a month off of school. I was sick for an entire month. And then it was winter break, so by the time I got back to school, which was two months later, I went to Hawaii and got a huge tan. So people were like, oh my god, you got sick and then you got tan. How does that make any sense? And I've suffered my entire life with this disease. And I, I felt it yesterday, just pain throbbing through my head and the symptoms are so real. <laughs> um, but the disease isn't. And it's really funny because my dad used to say, every time I got sick in elementary school and people would ask uh, him what I was suffering with, he said, ooh, very bad disease called fakeitis. <laughs> and my friends would be like, oh my God, well, I, what's, what's wrong? What are the symptoms of fakeitis? And my dad would say, <laughs> ooh, you don't want to know. <laughs> fakeitis is a nasty, nasty one. And they said, well, well, how do I get fakeitis? And he says, well, it's all around you all the time. And I laughed at it and it's kind of a joke, but it kind of isn't at the same time. Because how often in our lives do we suffer from imaginary illnesses? Do we suffer from not feeling good enough, from feeling unworthy? There are two choices that you have in a society which has unrealistic standards. One is to try to live up to them, to caffeinate yourself, to whip yourself, to shame yourself, to push yourself until you're so exhausted, you're so depleted, you're so overwhelmed that you want to crash or kill yourself. Or to break the cycle, to get out of the cycle and to realize what it is, to realize the unreality of your circumstances instead of criticizing yourself for not living up to them, to criticize the context for being unrealistic and recognize who you are in it so that you can break free from it, so that you can live your full expression out in the world and you can free yourself from a disease that everybody is afflicted with, but some people express the symptoms. It's like a latent gene that's just ready to be activated by one advertisement, by one breakup, by one failure, and boom, you're locked up in it. And what I'm saying is free yourself. I'm saying open your mind. I'm saying allow yourself to love yourself and not fall into all of these visions, all of these expectations, all of these ads that we're all prey to. How do we live up to the ideal standard of beauty in this world <laughs> when the people who represent beauty are photoshopped? How do we live by that? If we were to represent the ideal version of ourselves, what would we do? We would take the eyes, the ears, the nose, the chest, the butt of this person, and then we take the knowledge, we take the expertise, we take the position in life, we take the success, we take the emotional quality of life, the relationship skills of that other person. Of, and so we'd be the monster Frankenstein of 50 people. And that's so unrealistic. We get to live one life. We get to be one person that's us, ourselves, nobody else. And guess what? It takes work. <laughs> so yesterday I was walking around and oh, I felt this fakeitis coming back. I felt my head just wanting to pop off. It was a migraine and I had a choice in that moment. And you have a choice all the time. And I'll put it in the context of working out in the gym. If you're in the gym, and some of you who came to my Power of Joy uh, lecture, you know this. If you're in a gym and you're experiencing the pain of exercise, it's painful and you're on your last set, your last few reps of your last set, you've got two more reps to go and you're really feeling that pain. Or maybe you're just thinking about going to the gym because some of you don't even go to the gym. And you describe it as good. If you attach the word good to that pain, what will you do? Well, you'll do those two reps. You might do 10 more reps. Muhammad Ali said, I don't start counting the sit-ups and the crunches until it starts hurting. Because that's when it actually counts. That's when it is good. Is when it's painful, when it's burning, when you feel the tapas if you're into yoga. Now, what if you experience that same level of pain, but you attach the word bad to it? If you attach the word danger, if you attach the word harm to it? Well, guess what? You'll quit. You'll run away. You'll avoid it. You'll not continue. You won't persevere. So the difference between perseverance, determination, or quitting, quitting and avoidance is just one word that we attach to our pain, good or bad. Now, I call this the disease of the mind, and it's a rare disease because we all think we're so special. We all think that we're the only ones <laughs> suffering. <laughs> we think that 
it's our problem and nobody else shares it. And as one of my mentors or my guru, Tony Robbins, says, is that the biggest problem that most people have in the world is they think that they have problems. They're addicted to problems. And we want to compete and say our problems are more significant than everybody else's because that's how we make ourselves important. And that's how we get off the hook for actually taking responsibility for our lives, which might mean slowing down, which might mean accepting where we're at and not whipping ourselves for being not being better, smarter, faster, prettier, more productive, more intelligent, more able to succeed, more successful at a higher level. And by the way, higher levels, higher devils. I'll talk in another video about problems. I can just go on forever. I'm going to stop it right here, right now. So much love, many blessings, and allow yourself to feel worthy now. Allow yourself to feel the great, magnificent heart that you have beating through your chest and know that who you are makes a difference. Who you are is important in this world. And it doesn't matter if you think that you're not at the level that you should be at. Because the should is the feeling of shame. Should is the feeling of shame. And if you drop that and you can accept this moment exactly as it is without any linguistic references of this is bad, this is wrong, I need to be somewhere else, you will experience a magnificent moment of clarity and enlightenment. I call level one enlightenment the ability to experience pain and pleasure without suffering. And that's having the opportunity to experience joy all the time. So much love, many blessings, and feel joy now!